Hi everyone, it's Nicole. Welcome back to my channel and another felt stitching video tutorial. Today's video is all about creating a felt needle book with Pashta Design die cuts and felt. I am using the needle book dies from Pashta Design. Those are the dies on the left side of this magnet sheet. I'm kind of showing you there on the left side. On the other side are dies to make a scissor keeper. In addition to that die set, I am also using some hearts from a couple of different Pashta Design heart sets. Those will be linked in the description. Everything I'm showing here will be linked. I keep my dies in some binders, although I'm probably going to change that, but I do keep them on these magnet sheets. These are eight and a half by 11 magnet sheets from Lawn Fawn. Those are also going to be linked down in the description. They are fantastic for keeping your dies organized, for keeping them in place, for not having them fall all over the place. Because I am not using the embellishment dies that come with the needle book, I have used those before for another needle book. I'll show you that here in a minute. I am taking my die out and I am looking to see what do I have in my stash that fits or I also picked up a few of the latest release Pashta Design, Pashta Design dies and I'm going to lay those out as well. Now these are called color stories. I get my felt from a variety of places. These are actually from Pashta Design. I like the 100% wool felt. I highly recommend it for successful die cutting and stitching. You can use whatever you want. I'm just telling you what I use and what I have found works. Here you can see my felt. I keep them in some plastic clear bins and I sort them by color. That was my pink, um, pink, purple, red <laughs> bin of felt. Not only does it come in rolls, but you can also pick up some eight and a half by 11, or maybe it's nine by 12, but you can pick up the felt in sheets. These sheets are from Binzi Design. These are also 100% wool felt. So it really just depends on your project, the color, and maybe how you want to store things. I like a little of both. Now, to make it easy today, I did pick a color story collection from Pashta Design, and it comes with the felt, it comes with the coordinating DMC embroidery floss, and it comes with an embellishment kit. You can very easily pick up sequins, seed beads at your local craft store. You can curate your own collection. You do not have to buy a color story. You can piecemeal it together however you want. Again, I just made it easy today by using felt just from this collection instead of diving in to felt from my stash. I will tell you anytime you have seen other felt video tutorials, on my channel and I will link those right here up in the upper right corner, my playlist for felt stitching. I have pulled from my stash and I haven't stuck to one single color story. So this is a little new for me today. I generally like to mix and match. You can see how the DMC perfectly coordinates. Lizzie, who owns Pashta Design, makes this very easy for you if you like to buy within a color story. So what we're going to need is a outside cover, an inside cover, an inside page from our felt needle book. Now, in order to die cut these shapes for stitching, you will need a die cutting machine. I personally use the Spellbinders Platinum die cutting machine. I have the large size. There are two different sizes of machines. I am a full-time paper crafting video content creator, so you will see me with the large size machine. Unless you're going to die cut something very large, you probably could get by with the smaller of the two machines. I use mine on a daily basis for more than felt cutting, so for me, it's worth it to have the large machine. 
It folds up for easy storage. I'm going to fold down both sides. This will be the same on the large or the small. You'll want to use the platform and the two cutting plates. I always keep the same cutting plate on the bottom. This is the one that's going to get pretty messy um, just because that's where your die presses in as you roll it through the rollers to create that pressure to die cut. Then you simply move or rotate the lever to roll it through. I know that's not showing Going on screen and here I am die cutting the pieces so here is a heart I die cut the heart first this is the die that cuts the heart and it's from the basic heart collection and it die cuts the stitching holes then you can use the floral add-ons and I am going to lay that right over top of the heart and roll this through the machine and this is going to create the design to add your decorative Lazy Daisy stitches as well as help you line up the flower that goes on top. You can use this with or without this. That is what I love about this is it's very interchangeable. In addition, there are other add-ons. There's add-ons that create more of the wintery theme and things like that. So now I need to die cut all of the little parts and pieces. And you're gonna see me grab my felt, place my die, usually in a corner and roll it through. I'll probably generally run it partway through and back. That's just because I didn't wanna keep keep it rotating and rolling through. I don't think I end up using this color flower. I don't, but that's okay. I'll hold on to it for another project. This is the flower that works with this design that we have die cut into the heart. I like to keep all of my scraps of felt. You can see that little flowers, buttons, and all of that kind of thing can be die cut from scraps easily. Now this is the cover of our felt needle book. I am rolling this through my die cut machine. And if you have something with a straight edge, I find that it generally goes through easier by slanting it slightly and not having it go straight on. We are going to need two of these. This is the outer cover. The you can do the inner cover in the same color. I'm actually going to choose a different color for my inside cover. Uh, we're going to do the lighter aqua color instead. Now, I also want to die cut some embellishments in the outer cover. Those are some wire snips that I'm showing you. Your dies are going to come tabbed together like you see with this Love Apothecary add-on set. I am pulling a couple of these dies from this set and I'm snipping them apart with my wire snips so that I can use them for my needle book. Now, one thing I forgot to share with the creation of the needle book, see that little slit? You actually have to use an extra die to die cut that. I am. I apologize, I did not get that part recorded. Um, it is a little tab, you line up the little arrows along each side, and that's if you want to add a ribbon closure. So from the front of my needle book, I want to use the die that doesn't cut out the heart, but it does cut out the holes to stitch the heart that we'll be adding on top. That is an optional step. It does make stitching to your cover or whatever the piece is a little bit easier. From the light aqua, I did die cut the inside cover. And from that little scrap piece, I can die cut buttons, flowers, anything small. I like to trim up my felt to be nice and even, but that big, or not, I say big, but that long strip, I will save that in my scrap felt bin and I reach for my scraps when I am die cutting any small flowers, embellishments, etc. We'll do a little button here from the darker teal color. It took me a minute to figure out kind of my color scheme and how I wanted this all to come together, but once I figured it out, that was really helpful in deciding what needs to be die cut from what piece. So here we have our outer cover, we have some hearts, we have our inner cover. Now in addition, I want to die cut pockets. This is going to be the larger inside pocket. You can create 
one pocket. You could create two pockets. You could create layered pockets. I'm going to do a large and small layered on top. The sky is the limit. The way I am creating mine is not the way that it has to be at all. I want to create on one inside cover layered pockets and on the other backside inside cover I am going to have channels that needles will slide through. So that is that skinny piece that I'm die cutting here. Just like with the front cover where I die cut the holes to line up my heart piece with the holes in the cover, we are going to do that on the inside of our needle book as well. I find it's easiest to go ahead and die cut everything I need first and then start assembling. Once you have done this once or twice, it does get much easier and you really start to kind of get the feel for how the pieces go together. You always want to remember that if you're stitching anything to one piece of felt and it's a two-sided piece, that you're going to want to hide that with another piece of die cut felt so that you can hide your stitching. For my smaller pocket on top of the larger one, we're using that brighter pink to die cut the small pocket. Now you could, you could just use the small pocket if you wanted. This is how they will look layered together. There's the big and the small pocket. So if you want to easily line these up, there are dies that will die cut just the holes to line that up so you can stitch them together. So what we're going to do is take our large pocket. We are going to grab the coordinating die for the pocket die. Here it is, it just has holes in it. You can see it doesn't have that outer die line. We'll place it right on our large pocket. And I really should have removed that other die. There, am I gonna remove it? Guess not. And we're gonna roll that through just to get the holes die cut in the pocket. Then all we have to do is take the small pocket, lay it on top and stitch the small pocket to the large one. It'll line up just like that. Okay, so for the large pocket, we don't want it to go all the way to the center inside of the book because that'll be a lot right in that center seam. So there is the large pocket die. The whole die that lines it up, depending on if you're gonna put this on the right or the left, you wanna take the side with no holes and line that up with the left side and the side with holes next to the seam. But see how you have about, I don't know, a quarter of an inch or so before the center seam of the needle book. So it's not going to go all the way to the center. That is what makes it lie nice. Then you're going to roll that through and it's only die cutting one vertical row of holes to die cut. That's because we're going to line our pocket up in the bottom corner and we'll use those outer dies for that. Or outer holes, die cut holes to stitch that part together. And I will show you the stitching here in a minute. Next, I'm going to take the die that die cuts the channels. I'm going to do the double row of channels in my needle book. You could also do a single row if you only want to do one. I love that there's so many different options. The monogram that I am adding here and making sure that it is within the stitching holes for the outer part of that needle book, that is from a different set. I am using this to customize my needle book. That is completely optional. A lot of the things I'm showing to create this needle book today do not come with the needle book. The needle book comes with a basic floral set. So definitely look at that on Poshta Design. I am just incorporating some other dies that I have to make this a Valentine's needle book. Making sure that these are both lined up the way I want them to be. And I feel like that's just keeps shifting. Another thing I would like to note at this point is that my cutting plates are very warped. 
Um, and that's because I use it a lot. So I am just being really careful before I run this through. All right, so there we have the holes to place the little uh, layering piece on top and then we can backstitch the monogram. So there's kind of how this is going to look and then we'll place these two channels here. So here is the inside cover of our needle book. The inside pages I will be die cutting from the gray felt. Okay, you can see that I decided to do three needle books at one time and I am going to go ahead and prep my embroidery floss. I have used the floss drop die from Pashta Design to die cut some white cardstock and I've used my label maker to make some labels for these. That way, after I'm done stitching my needle books and maybe the color story felt is gone, I can put this DMC embroidery floss right into my stash um, and it's labeled really nicely. I like to start with this step before I ever take my needle to the felt because it has everything ready to go. When you are pulling your floss, pull it from the side that has the number. I like to pull it all the way out, match the ends, fold it in half, match the ends, fold it in half again, and then snip through the loops in each end. Then I put a loop through that large piece of the floss drop and take the tails through. We're going to do this for each color of floss and then I will have all of them ready to go for my projects. Not only for the needle book, but anything else I want to make. Now it's time to pick the floss that I want to use to stitch on all of the different components. Oftentimes I like a contrasting look, but there will be times that I want the tone on tone look as well. Starting with my teal color here, I am going to grab three strands of floss. I prefer three strands of floss for my stitching. You can obviously use however many you want. If you prefer all six, that's fine uh, for a much thicker look. If you want to use four, whatever the case may be, I am just telling you that I like to use three strands of floss for my stitching. Taking my heart, I am going to go ahead and do some lazy daisy stitches here on my heart design. I leave my tail without a knot in it. I do find even with three strands of floss, my knot sometimes will come through. I generally prefer to tie a knot with the two ends a little bit later. Let's zoom in just a little bit to get a closer look at the stitching. And I believe there is three lazy daisies in the upper part of the heart and five in the lower. If you want to stitch it a different way, that's okay too. Literally, whatever you want to do here, um, it's completely up to you. I like the little contrast and I love the floral decorative touch that these Lazy Daisy stitches add to my heart. Once I have everything on this side, I will flip it over and I'm going to take that end I left and I am going to tie this into a knot. I just go around once and once more and then I snip the ends. This is all hidden. It's encased inside. I don't want a super lumpy knot, but I do find that this works just fine. And sometimes I don't even trim that, to be honest. Okay, and here after I knotted that, because I'm moving down to the other end and I wanted to secure the loose end, that's why I left it that way, I just remembered. I did stitch this floral with the button on using the teal. In the photos, you're going to see that it's actually bright pink. For I On the first one, which is the one you're seeing me stitch, I did it in teal and then I went back later and added the bright pink on top and I liked the little bit of contrast. So on the other two needle books, I did a bright pink contrast. Um, I wanted to let you know that there's nothing wrong with the teal. It was totally fine. <laughs> it was just me thinking, oh, I think a little bright pink in the center of the flower is going to look good. So now I'm going to add these lazy daisies here um, in the lower part. 
of the heart. So now I'm just knotting it. I went ahead and did all of those. And here is my little heart. Now, I don't really want a huge contrast for the border of my heart. I want it to remain pink. So remember I said I liked to use the teal to add the decorative elements. In this case, I wanna match the floss color to the felt. So we're gonna use that pale pink color. And starting at the bottom, although you can start anywhere you want, on the back side, we are lining up the holes that we die cut in our cover to the holes in our heart and stitching the heart right to that cover. Once you get going, it is pretty easy and I am going up and down every other one. You'll notice I'm not doing a traditional back stitch. This is on purpose. When I stitch with felt, this is how I prefer to stitch. And it is especially important if you are creating a dimensional embellishment or when, for example, when we stitch the front and the back covers together, if you do a back stitch, it is not going to be the seamless stitched look like you would get with a sewing machine. This is how you get that seamless stitching up and down every other hole because when we get to the end, we're going to reverse that and go up and down in between all of those and fill in the open spaces. So I am going to continue this all the way around. Anytime you're stitching, this is what I would recommend because, and once you get in the habit of it, uh, it is so easy. You just have to remind yourself that, obviously for this heart, it, it'll be hidden, but if it was on something else and you'd see the back of it, you want it to be clean. You don't want it to have that long stitch that you would get from a traditional back stitch. I hope that makes sense. So this is more like a running stitch all the way around and then you reverse it and running stitch all the way back around the other way. And I'm always just checking to make sure that I am getting it through those holes and lining it up. If you don't want to die cut the holes in the cover, you could just, you know, line it up and start stitching. This makes it very easy to, in my opinion, just to kind of as a safety check to make sure it's lined up. How pretty is that little pink heart on this teal cover? Once we add in some bright pink embellishments, it is really going to pop. So when we get to the end, we are going to reverse it and I am going back the other way. And I am going to speed that up, but I'll leave it in to show you how easy and how pretty it looks once you have filled in all of these. When I get back to the end, I will be close or yes, right next to where I started. So I'm going to knot it at that point but I am going to leave the end with the needle connected um, just so I don't have to restart again, I guess. And we are going to stitch the little uh, bright pink heart that is from that same apothecary add-on. And we are going to add the heart somewhere on here. And I think I like it right there. So we are just going, there's only little stitching holes through the center. So I am stitching it on through the center of this just like so. So cute. Mm, I think I got my ends all a little tangled. Let's just fix that and knot it. So the last couple things we're going to do to stitch our cover before that is finished and we can work on the inside pages is I did use the XOXO from that Love Apothecary set to die cut in the lower right corner of our needle book. We are going to do a little back stitch to stitch that, and we're going to add a scattering of sequins and seed beads from the color story that I used. So again, if you don't have these, you are welcome to use whatever you have in your stash. I will be using three strands of floss for this as well. So I am going to mention here, 
uh, for all of my stitching, I am using three strands of floss. The only time I do not use three strands of floss is for the seed beads, and I am using a single strand, but folded in half, so it's basically like two strands for my seed beads. And I'll talk about that when we get to stitching it. So down here in the lower corner, you'll notice I am doing that little back stitch. This is encased within what I'm stitching. So uh, my same rule doesn't exactly apply for the every other running stitch. And as I get to the end of the first X, I am going to knot this and just trim that loose end. But I'm going to not trim it completely because we're just gonna move on to the next letter. And we're going to do the same thing for the remaining letters of XOXO. For the seed beads, I will be using the color story that coordinates with this set so it's all going to be like aquas and whites i think those are the the sequins and beads that i chose to use for my project today i love a little scattering of these with my projects and so on all over the front cover we are going to be using some seed beads by themselves and some with a sequin when you are attaching i highly recommend a beading needle of some sort because you need something with a very small eye that will go through the center of the bead. I put one strand of DMC embroidery floss through my beading needle and fold it in half. So basically it's two strands, but I can only really get one strand through the eye of my beading needle. Um, you can use collapsible beading needles. I still have misplaced mine from a few months ago. I actually bought more and I have, I can't believe this, you guys, but I've misplaced those as well, so they'll show up. I'm looking. So I take, come from the back, we go through the center of the sequin, through the seed bead with our beading needle, and then around the seed bead and back through the sequin. That is attaching the sequin and seed bead to our project. Now, in addition, I am going to come up from the back in random spots and I'm gonna grab a seed bead onto my beading needle, wrap it around the beading needle and go back down through the same hole and that is attaching our seed beads to our design. It just gives a fun little look. They don't all have to have a sequin unless you want them to. I am going to continue to do this to embellish the front of my needle book. And as I mentioned, once we have all of our seed beads and sequins with seed beads in place, this is going to complete the cover. So let me show you another sequin. We're gonna come up from the back. I guess this is a seed bead only. And go around the seed bead and down. Um, come up from the back, place our sequin right through our needle, grab a seed bead, place the seed bead, go around the seed bead, and back down through the back of the piece. For this design, I went for a more scattered look. There are times, though, you might want a little bit more of a uniform design. It really just depends on what you're going for here. Now, once we have all of this in place, we are going to grab the inside components of our felt needle book and we are going to work on that inside cover just like we have worked on the outer cover before we take the two pieces and stitch everything together. So for this we're going to need our light aqua piece, our pockets, and then the channels to for our needles. The pockets are great for things like counting pins, a tail weaver, um, maybe even a small pack of needles, things like that. I've laid everything out on my design. I want to embellish the pocket with another flower. This flower looks exactly like the flower on the front cover. So for that, you should stitch the flower on first. I will tell you that I started to not do that, but I will take a small break. I wanted to leave it in so you could see how you can fix that if you do the same. So I took the pockets and I'm lining up the small pocket with the big pocket. 
and we want to stitch the pockets together before we stitch them to the front cover. Always think of it as starting with the upper or topmost layer and working your way to the bottom layer. Once I come down the side of this pocket, I realize I should have stitched the flower first if I want this little tiny pocket to be functional. So I am going to pause and I am going to stitch my flower to this pocket. And of course, I want to use a different color of floss. So I actually just take my floss off of my needle and I switched, you could just switch needles. That probably would have been easier, but I didn't. And I am going to stitch this on with the bright pink floss. So I'm coming up from the back through my flower, kind of ignore all of these ends. Normally you wouldn't have those. I'm all about making it work. And then go through your button. And I apologize, I am out of focus because I had to pull it up close to me to fix. I am simply sewing the flower and the button on in place. And then knotting it on the back. I wasn't very far, I probably could have just taken that out, but I didn't, so that's where we're at. Okay, there is our pocket. We will thread our floss back on. And we are going to finish going around our pocket like so. So now that we have that flower in place, we can go ahead and stitch the small pocket to the large pocket. And again, I am doing that running stitch from one side of the pocket to the other and then reversing and going back the opposite way to fill in all of those little gaps and give it that beautiful seamless stitched look. Once we have the small pocket attached to the large pocket, we can then attach the large pocket to the inside cover of our needle book. For this example, I did put the large pocket on the left side. You would simply reverse the stitching die that we used earlier if you wanted to do that on the right side or if you wanted a pocket on both the front or the right and the left. Now that we have our pocket, I am going to grab the floss. Actually, before I stitch the large pocket on, I forgot. I'm going to go ahead and put the needle channels on the right side of my uh, inside cover and I am stitching two of these. Ignore me having some issues getting started. <laughs> it happens sometimes. And again, I'm doing that running stitch. So a nice straight little running stitch. Oh, and my floss came out. I mean, it was a hot mess express there for just a second. And we are going to go all the way, running stitch this cutie in place and then reverse it. And the great thing about this, if you have some long needles, um, if you, you know, need some of those long needles to make pin cushions or whatever the case may be, that's where I kind of like to keep these. I have my needle book handy. This is generally... Um, I have one needle book that I use for felt stitching and that's where I keep like all my felt needles and my beading needles and all of that good stuff. Then I have a felt needle book that has my cross stitch needles in it and on one page I keep like size 26, on another I keep 28s and then I usually have a beading needle in here as well. Um, in case my project calls for some beads. You know, some heart and hand projects and things like that will call for beads. Other projects do too, but that's just off the top of my head. And so I like to have a beading needle handy 
in both of those places because I keep my felt needle book with my felt stitching supplies in my craft room, in my craft studio, and I keep my other, my cross stitch needle book with me in my cross stitch case. I've also backstitched my monogram letter here. Now I chose to just backstitch it into the design like I did the XOXO on the cover. There are dies that you can layer on top like I did those needle channels if you wanna do that instead. I thought about adding a die cut felt heart or a flower and I ultimately decided that I felt like it was too big. So I'm just going to add a scattering of some sequins and seed beads here next to the monogram, not a lot, maybe just like two or three. And then I'll just knot that and finish it off. And then we're gonna go back and work on the large pocket because now we're getting close to assembling our needle book. I like to double check it. You can see how the inside page, which has that pinked edge, is much thinner than, or thinner. It's a little skinnier. It's a little smaller is what I wanna say. And then I also have some awesome ribbon here. It's almost like a seam binding ribbon. It's from the stamp market. I will list that down below as well. It comes in all kinds of beautiful colors that I absolutely love. And you can see how I've threaded it through those slots in the needle book. You do not have to die cut the slots in the needle book. I love how the needle book is fully customizable, meaning if you want to have the, the ribbon closures, you can. If you would rather just leave it the way it is, you can do that as well. Okay, I am taking three strands of my light color, that light um, aqua color of DMC embroidery floss, and that is what we're going to use to stitch our needle book together. That means on the inside of the needle book, it is going to match the color of the needle book perfectly, but on the outside cover, we are going to have that beautiful little subtle contrast. So what I'm doing is I am stitching just the side, right there, right left of center, we are just stitching the side and stitching just like we would anything else but i'm going to finish this and knot it so just the right side of the pocket just left of center center once we have that we are going to stitch the center seam of our needle book through all three layers the front cover the inside cover and the page or pages. And then we will stitch, the final thing we will do is stitch all the way around the outer edge, encasing all of the back sides and everything together. There is a little trick to that that I have found that works really well. So this is where we're bringing it all together. Once we've done all of our embellishing, this is where we bring the entire design together and make it look beautiful and finished. Now that I'm back to where I started and it's clear down to that bottom edge, on the back, I am going to knot this and snip it. Then we're going to lay all three layers together as I just mentioned. The ribbon is through my needle book. We're going to lay the inside, so back to back, and then we're laying the inside page right there. This is optional, but I am using some binder clips to hold my page in place while I stitch the center. You wanna stitch the center first, stitching all three layers together, and then we're going to do the outer. We are going to come up in between the front and front cover and the inside cover because we want to finish our knot and it have it kind of hide in between those. Once we have come up between those two, we are going to go up and down with our running stitch be with all three layers. So you'll notice I have to flip it a lot to get those lined up. It is worth it if you mess up and you miss one of the holes and your stitches look wonky, pull it out. Um, unthread your needle, pull it out, 
believe me, you will not be happy if your stitches look crazy. Sometimes I think I'm too smart and I don't need to flip it. And I start, I look at my stitch and I'm like, oh no, your stitches look bad. <laughs> so I will fix it at that point. So I am going to fast forward because I am simply up, down, up, down, and we will reverse it and come back the other way, finishing in between the two layers and knotting to hide the knot between the front cover and inside cover. One tip that I did not do right here, but I did do it when I stitched the other two needle books, you can clip your ribbon into a binder clip and that is going to keep it from being in the way. And that's one of my best tips for dealing with those ribbon ends because they do tend to be kind of, you know, they're hanging there and they get caught in your embroidery floss, etc. So if you need to, just clip them into the binder clip so they're clipped up out of the way and you will be glad you did. And then I'm going through those center or through those two layers and I am simply going to knot. Oh, I'm actually pulling stitches out. So remember I just said that sometimes I think I'm a little smart, too smart and I don't have to look. I noticed that I did not like how these looked and in the spine of your book, you're going to see it. So it's worth it to go ahead and fix that. I had to actually uh, restitch those. Oh, I didn't like that either. This is a really good example of, you know, what you can do if you have to. So let's, okay, and now I need to finish this. I forgot I had to be really tricky. <laughs> it's probably not all that tricky, but you guys know what I'm saying. Look how pretty it's coming together. And this part does take a little time, not gonna lie. I mean, the embellishing is so fun and then you get to this part and it's just the, the guts and the assembly base, not the guts, it's just the basic assembly. So I've knotted it in between the two. I'm gonna snip close and we have stitched all the way from the top to the bottom. All of our layers are together. The ribbon is sandwiched in between and it is connected now because we stitched through it there in the center. And we are going to do the same thing. I've grabbed another length of embroidery floss, three strands, and starting in between the front cover and the center cover, leaving a small tail, we are going to go up and down a running stitch all the way around the front and the inside cover. You can see I'm holding my inside pages out of the way. We are not stitching those because we of course want those to be free and to be able to um, be loose where we can put needles and things in them. What I have found when I was cutting my embroidery floss earlier, and I said I pull it out from the skein, I fold it in half, I fold it in half again and fold it in half a third time. When I do that, um, I can get go around my needle book with one of those strand. I'm gonna call it one strand, but you know that it's three strands. I can go around it one direction with one strand. Then I get a new strand and go around the other direction, filling in all of those gaps with another strand. So it does take quite a bit of floss, but it is not a enough the way I cut my floss because I don't like working with a super long length. I find it gets knotted. So that's what why I do this. And because it's, it's a little, you will have a little extra, I guess is what I wanna say, but because it's not enough to go around twice, I would prefer to be able to go all the way around and knot it, and then go all the way around again and knot it. I hope that makes sense. I am gonna continue going up and down all the way around my needle book and then we will reverse it. So I'm still going around the first time and it's really important to make sure that you are stitching evenly through those holes 
Thus why you see me flip it back and forth a lot because that will ensure that I have nice even stitches all the way around. By any decorating you want to do, remember, please do that before you put the front and inside covers together. You'll notice I'm flipping my ribbons and my inside pages out of the way as I'm stitching. That way it just helps me be able to see what I'm doing a little easier. That is completely optional. I have just found that if I do that, it makes it quite a bit easier. Now, as I'm coming around, and remember, we've only stitched down that left side of our pocket. I am going to be now attaching not only the front and inside cover, but I'm attaching that pocket to the piece as well. So that's going to create the pocket with our stitching right here. So we already stitched down the right side of the pocket in this case, since I chose to put it on the left side of the book. And that is why I stitched the pocket in this aqua-ish color. And now we are simply attaching the remaining two sides to form that pocket. All the way, we are almost back to where we started. And again, when we get back to where we started, remember I start in between the front and inside cover. That way I end between the front and inside cover and I knot it and secure it. I had to rethread my needle also. I think I pulled it out on accident. It happens. So I'm getting, I kind of make my knot pretty close to the center. I don't always, but I do sometimes. And I, I'm finished in between, pulling it tight so that knot kind of slips in between the seam, what I'm calling the seam allowance. And now we're starting again in between the front and inside cover, and we want to stitch all the way around. Okay. So I know this is super speedy stitching, but I feel like I went around one time, so it's basically the same thing. I wanted to leave it in the video, so hopefully you can at least get an idea of what I'm doing. It is much easier to stitch not on camera when you're not trying to hold your arms out super far in front of you, but I hope this gets the, the gist. Every once in a while I forget and I pull it too close to my face. Look how pretty those stitches are looking around the edge though. Don't you guys just love it? Oh my goodness. I just absolutely think it looks amazing. So, so happy with this all the way around. And We're going to finish up and tie a little knot. Okay, there I'm coming through the two layers to finish. And that is it, you guys. Once we have this, we are going to tie our needle book into a, our, the ribbons into a bow and our needle book is complete. We can add our tail weaver in here, counting pens, straight pens, needles, beading needles, anything that you want to keep in your needle book. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video tutorial sharing how to create a Valentine's themed needle book using Pashta Design dies, felt, and the embellishment kit. The supplies I use to create my project are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Please let me know down in the comments what other felt stitching video tutorials you would like to see and I will work on getting those out. Please be sure to check out my channel for the upcoming felt stitching basics where I show you all of my favorite tools that you need to die cut. Thanks for watching. 
If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, click that like button, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to always be notified when I have a new floss tube stitching or quilting video. Thank you guys so much for joining me today, and we'll see you next time.